Hello everyone, welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, the 21st of January. Your show hosts are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffat, Tammy Moore, and Paula Noggle. Thanks to Tammy Moore for doing the closed captioning, and thanks to Patty Ruffing for providing the PD certificates for um, our webinar sessions, as well as the new intro for Collaborate that's in the Live Binder. I'm going to turn the show over to both Kim and Peggy, who are going to be our special guests today. And they will talk about the topic, Charge Up Your PLN. Well, hello to all of you. Both Kim and I are struggling with our colds and coughs, so we're hoping that we're not going to drive you crazy with coughing and sneezing and um, raspy voices, but we are so excited to be able to share with you today. And we've done this in a workshop before, but we thought that you might like to see this in a webinar. So we're calling this Charge Up Your PLN a credit card with no expiration date. And we know how much schools are struggling with budget cuts and uh, priorities for professional development where they just don't have the funds to support it. And teachers need to be supported with professional development, but we want to encourage all of you to start thinking about taking charge of your own learning and not waiting for your school or district to provide that for you, but to get started. And so we're kind of talking about PD on demand today, and we're going to be issuing you a superhero credit card so that you can learn how to build your PLN through all of these fantastic resources. We are not even going to scratch the surface on talking about all of the resources we put in our special live binder for you. We're going to guide you through them, hit some highlights, but you're going to want to spend some time exploring afterwards to dig in more. For those of you that don't know our backgrounds, Kim and I are just going to do a real quick intro about ourselves. I'm a retired educator. Um, and I have been many roles in my life, but I have been a principal, a special ed director, a teacher for over all in education for over 50 years, a university instructor, and as you all know, I'm the host of the weekly Classroom 2 Live webinars. I'm also a Discovery Star, Discovery Educator, and one of the organizers of K-12 Online Conference, and one of the organizers for EdCamp Phoenix. And in addition, one of the things I love doing, which is how I learned about some of, so many of these things, is I love being a volunteer moderator in all of the virtual conferences that Steve Hargaden hosts, and we'll be sharing that in our live binder. And Kim's going to introduce herself. Good morning, everyone. I am so honored to be part of this group. Um, I, I have to stop and say how much I appreciate Peggy. She um, pushes me to do things that I normally would not be comfortable doing, and this is one of those situations. But if Peggy says to do it, and I know many of you in this group agree with me, you just do it. Um, I am a technology integration specialist in a small district, only eight schools in Phoenix, Arizona, the Madison School District. Um, I was a classroom teacher for six years. I taught fourth through six, and then I got my master's in ed tech, and I have done a little teaching at the college level. I am a brain pop educator, proud to say that. And because of Peggy, I have grown my PLN exponentially. And it has made me better at what I do. And I am very appreciative of all that she has done to help me. So we're ready to dive in. Let me um, just give everybody a forewarn. Both, as Peggy said, we both have colds. And I have a tendency to try to be funny sometimes. So if we go off in a coughing fit, it'll be because um, something funny has happen happened. And just be patient with this. OK, back to you, Peggy. 
Well, and here it is. Here is your special charge card to help you begin to take charge of your own professional learning. We guarantee that your interest will compound daily based on your investment of time and energy. And the great news is there's no expiration date on your card. So you are a superhero with this card. It never expires, and it doesn't have a limit. You know how credit cards often give you a, a dollar limit, and you can't go over that? There is no limit on this one. So I hope that you will enjoy. It's, yes, and it's a chip card, too. I hope you will enjoy using this as you start exploring the resources we have for you. So. What we did is we put our live binder inside the Classroom 20 Live live binder. So uh, the link that you're going to want to go to is the one that Lori just posted. It's got everything in it. And I want to give you a quick guided tour through this so that you can see um, all of the exciting things we have for you. So I'm going to go into screen sharing. And I certainly hope that it doesn't cause too much of a bandwidth problem for all of you. But <clears throat> this is our live binder. And our entire slides are within this live binder. You'll see them down under presentation slides. Um, but there are lots of other things. So don't feel overwhelmed, because we certainly don't expect to cover all of these things. And we don't expect you to do that either. But we wanted a compilation of resources that you can use and go back to whenever you like. Often, there are virtual conferences that are coming up. And they are in the future. But many of them have archives with recordings. And some of those past recordings are fabulous. So we're going to tell you about some of those. So I'm going to be clicking over here and um, just giving you a little bit of a tour about what you're going to find here. This gets its own tab because I just love this quote. Education is something we create for ourselves. And it comes from Stephen Downs. And I love that he says that we need to move beyond the idea that an education is something that is provided for us and toward the idea that an education is something that we create for ourselves. And I think that's true for teachers, and it's true for kids. So I wanted you to know that that's the focus of our presentation today. I, under that, have a single tab that I want you to be aware of, because many of you do presentations yourselves. And this is an awesome Flickr photo group for great quotes about learning and change. And if you go to that pool, you can see all of the um, quotes with images that have been created. They're all Creative Commons. You can use any of them. And you can create your own and upload them. This has been going on for, oh, four or five years for sure, maybe longer. So I encourage you to check that out. The next tab, and you notice how the little white arrow pops up beside each tab as I click on it. Well, when you click on these tabs, it opens up. And you're going to see all kinds of um, sub-tabs underneath that. So here are our free webinars. Let me just scroll very slowly here. And look how many there are. I mean, and they're ongoing. There are archives. There are future webinars. And many of them have newsletters that you can subscribe to to get the latest. Some of them are on BAM Radio. Some are on EdTech Talk Radio. I love that one. Um, and of course, Classroom 2.0 Live is right at the top of the list. And that's because you know it's our favorite. <laughs> so under the Free virtual conferences, same thing. That happens to be a picture that was taken at an ISTE pre-conference day back when it was called NEC. And um, there are lots of 
free virtual conferences. Again, just slowly scrolling down there, you're going to see many of them. We're going to talk about um, some of these in a bit. But K-12 online conference is going on right now. Um, EdWeb webinars go on every week. So, and next week, um, next weekend, EdCon, EdCon Philly is going on, and that is a webinar, or actually a three-day virtual conference that is mainly a face-to-face -face conference that we get to participate in for free because they stream it. So we'll be talking more about that. And then we have this huge tab that's all kinds of miscellaneous things. It's not webinars, it's not conferences, but it's ways that you can start organizing your lives to track all these things going on. We're going to talk about Twitter and TweetDeck and hashtags and Pinterest and Periscope and blogs and so much more. Just quickly scrolling down here, you can see we've got a lot of resources there. We want to tell you about participate learning chats. We want to tell you about how you can do blogging with your students. So you'll see there just are lots of resources. And in that section, we also have a lot of online resources for teaching lesson plans, places you can find tutorial videos and things like that that will help you with your teaching and that can also be used with students. So those are things that you'll want to explore later. Um, finally, we have a whole tab for LiveBinders information. If you want to start using LiveBinders, this tab has lots of tutorials, lots of examples. Um, just great information about how you can use live binders. And we wanted to have that all right here for you because uh, we use live binders every week in Classroom 2 Live. And I know you're familiar with how powerful they can be, but if you want to create your own, this will help you do that. And then as you can see, we have our last tab, and that is our entire presentation slide. So you're welcome to use that later. So with that, I am going to stop sharing and uh, <coughs> go back to the slides, and Kim is going to take over, I think. Yes, I am. We're going to be talking now about more free webinars and some of the resources that you can look to um, participate in them as well. Well, let's just start here with the one that we've, we all get started with. As I talk about various resources, I will be interjecting my own journey to building my PLN. Peggy George, as I men mentioned before, introduced introduced me to my first resource that started my PLN through her web show, Classroom 2.0 Live. After the shows, we would discuss the topics and presenters that she would suggest of people I can follow. And this would include Wesley Fryer, Steve Hargadon, Aviva Dunziger, Jeff Bradbury, Sam Patterson, and so many more. These people have been a rich source of insight and learning for me. For about the last six years, uh, or about six years ago, I introduced the archived shows from Peggy Show in particular for um, PD in the Madison School District. As the technology integration specialist, that was my job. I did the presentations. Um, I worked with teachers to do presentations, but not everybody could come in and participate and be there after school. They had masters to work on. They had children to pick up. So realizing what a rich library she she and her team had of archived web shows, I picked probably six to eight of them every um, nine weeks and said, these are the ones you can pick from, and here's some of the things you're going to do to demonstrate knowledge. So instead of them just writing me a brief, a brief summary, they could do that, but some of them I said, no, you've got to contact the presenter directly and give them some feedback, or you have to check out their links and tell me about the links and ones that you might use. And I got smart about a year later and said, now you have to share what you've learned with three people in your in your at your grade level or at your school that was my effort to get them to grow their own PLN as well <laughs> now as i mentioned before what is really really nice about classroom 2.0 is the archives. I love the word archives. I should have a t-shirt made that I love archives. I can go back and watch at any point in time that I want to. Um, 
sometimes I miss information and I want to go back. It's just in time learning for yourself. When teachers go in, and I've, I've said it before, where they can go in and find their own, and that way they become shoppers and become aware of all the things that are out there. And it has really changed, not, not for all the teachers, don't I wish, but a, the way of thinking for many of the teachers that I work with, and this is not just the teachers in my school district, but part of the PLN too, because as, you, as Peggy has mentored me, I see it as my job to help mentor others, and my best friend Joe, I Peggy and I drag, drug her in, screaming and kicking the whole way, but she is doing that now and sees the absolute value that is there. And when it comes to live binders, um, there's a moniker for Peggy that I gave her probably four or five years ago. She truly is the queen of live binders. She is such a strong believer in it. She even came over and did a class for me with some teachers in the Madison School District. But not just the class. She had the two owners, Barb and Tina, Skype in with the teachers and talk about making it real. It really left a mark for those teachers. Another resource that Peggy introduced me to, which I in turn introduced other people, is EdWeb. It's a social and learning network for educators, and it's made up of communities that cover a wide variety of topics. Each community has webinars and other resources, including quizzes and presentations, all resources. And this is not the best, it is the best part. It's not only the highest quality, it's free. We love that. I belong to several of the communities and get um, regular notices on updates and conversations and upcoming web webinars. And another perk from EdWeb is that it provides a member access to all webinars that are archived. Remember, we love that word archive. And did I mention it? Uh, yes, it's free. I was fortunate enough to do my first um, webinar, no, I think maybe it was my second webinar with them, and it's just amazing all the things that are out there for teachers and hopefully someday administrators to get out there and learn on their own. Peggy, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Well, I am an enthusiastic fan of Ed Web webinars. And as I mentioned in the chat, I probably go to four or five every week. And um, there are many different communities. And you don't have to join all of them. You join the ones that you're really interested in. And it's free to join. But when you join, you get notifications of upcoming webinars. So you'll know whether it's something you want to go to. And if it happens, happens to be during the school day when you can't attend the live session. It's all recorded and it's put up there the very next day. So you can go back and watch the recording. But I put these slides in here just to give you an idea of some of the things that are possible. And these are the communities I participate in. And they didn't all fit on one slide. So there's one. And there's another one. And there are technology, there are reading, there are literacy sites, there are librarian communities, there are new teacher sites. This is a great site. And um, he calls it new teacher help. But it's really good for all teachers, especially if you're new to some of the, the tools that he might be teaching you about. So he gives you guided tours through different tools that you might use as a teacher. And it's um, very helpful. So if you work with new teachers, you might want to share this community with them. Tell them about it. And they can watch it all on their own time. Kim? and share with this as well. The group of participants ranged from newbies to tech gurus, and it was an incredible
Okay, so it's Kim. For some reason, we're having some audio. It does sound like you're speaking, and it's, we had a little brief bit where we could hear you, and, and then it got quiet again. You want to check your audio in the audio setup wizard to see if something changed? Sure, so sorry. She has so many great things to say, and I'm sitting here listening to them because she's right beside me. But um, we will move into um, virtual um, conferences. And, uh, yes, and the first one I want to mention, and there are a lot of these on the subtabs in the live binder. Library 2.0 is always a great conference. Many of these are organized by Steve Hargadon under the Learning Revolution. But they have a, a main conference every year, and then they have a mini conference a couple of times during the year. And the wonderful thing is you can participate live, you can be a presenter, or you can um, watch the recordings. And you'll find the recordings on um, tabs on all of these sites. So uh, click around and check back. Even though the archives go back a few years, there are still some really relevant things there. So check that out. Another conference I really love is the Global Education Conference. That happens every year in November. Besides at ISTE, I mean, they, they have a huge outreach. But presenters from all around the world come to this conference to present. And this slide isn't the latest um, conference slide. They have, a, and when you go to the link, you'll see the latest stuff right on top. But you'll hear all kinds of presenters talking about things related to education. It's not a marketplace kind of thing. It's all about how we can teach our students to be global learners and, and global citizens. Kim, let's see if your mic is back. Um, I have to be honest, people don't generally want to hear me talk, so um, it's kind of nice for people to go, can we hear you? OK, K-12 online. I participated in this, oh man, years ago, I want to say it was probably 10 or 11, and I loved it. And the two reasons I loved it, first off, quality, and secondly, they were short. So I could go in and get a couple in a day and then process them mentally, because I can't watch something without going in and looking at the links and really putting it in an area where it's going to apply for me where I can share it with teachers. So after participating, I want to say after one year, the next year I got the idea again of putting them into our PD for the Madison teachers. And one of the big selling factors was that they were short and meaningful. And there was such a wide variety of topics. And they just, we used them for, I think, for probably about four years. Not able to do that now. Our teachers are a little overwhelmed with all this going on in education. But I still refer back to them. And I absolutely love them. I wholeheartedly suggest you check into those. Once again, they're archived. Yahoo to the team that puts this together. Um, what, what incredible amounts of work they must do to put this all together. But go back to the archives. And don't forget, it's going on right now. It just makes it amazing. I want to go on and talk a little bit more about having it as a PD um, for, cre or for your uh, being recertified. Simply take it to our curriculum director, and she said, this me talking about it before, and I did share a couple with her. Some of you may need to take a letter to your school district that allows teachers to do that for professional development. So um, you might want to take something like this into them so that they understand what a truly valuable tool it is. And one of the reasons our curriculum director accepted it was we had this list um, of 
why we wanted th them to be able to use it for PD credits and the short videos as I mentioned it before and they had a variety of ways of presenting information it wasn't just PowerPoint presentations sometimes there was a podcast um, there was a blog they would refer to and as I pointed out to our curriculum director it's not just simply sit and get they're learning about new areas of technology that can truly benefit the teachers but obviously ultimately the students. That's one of the reasons we really liked it and what I loved was I got to introduce social bookmarking. So one of the ways that you can get that in there. I want to throw one last thing in, a uh, suggestion. As I was reading over things again, I think I'm going to try an alternate book study. We're going to do a podcast cast study. I want to try to do that this summer with teachers. So either they'll come to my house, and you saw a picture earlier of uh, at my house with the cow table and everything where we do geek fests. Have them come together. We have coffee and pastries, and, because, and we can go to the bathroom when we want, and then when you're a teacher, that's really exciting, and drink an extra cup of coffee. But when they come in, they will have watched one or two short videos, and then we do puzzle learning. We come in, and we share, and we share the resources. Very informal, very fun, and I, I, I just I want to try it, so I had that spark. OK, and. Okay, IST Unplugged. Um, after attending my first hack ed day in Denver in 2010, I was hooked. Now, I have to tell you, I was scared, but Peggy was there, so I had to be there. I'm her minion. This event is structured along the lines of an unconference, or as many of you know, they're called ed camps. So the people make up the sessions for the day, and they're in charge of their own learning. That is such a powerful statement. When I was in the classroom, that's what I believed in. I was a facilitator for my students. They had to be in charge of their learning. So at, the, at this event, you got out of it what you put into it. And I was nervous talking to people. I wish, I'm pretty sure people wish I were nervous now because it's, how you doing? What are you learning now? And it's just so great. And I've had the opportunity to meet some of the people that I've kind of been groupie for, like a groupie for Vicki Davis, known as Cool Cat Teacher, Tammy Worcester Tang, Jeff Bradbury. Oh, I was on a Twitter name and got to meet Wes Fryer. And those are just a few of the people that I got to meet. Talk about charging up your PLN credit card. Next, Peggy is going to talk about something she participated in that was really kind of cool because she brought us all into it. Thank you. Oh, no, I went too far. Sorry, Peg. Uh, and that's because we were both click, click, clicking. <laughs> I'm, I want to sh quickly share with you about the not at ISTE group because there are lots of people that can't afford to go to ISTE and so for several years, I'm not quite sure how many because I just got involved this last year, they have had a group called Not at ISTE. Last year it was Not at ISTE um, 2016, they used that hashtag and um, we created a live binder that is incredible and what we were able to do was to bring in resources from presenters at the actual conference and share them with people through this live binder. And we had our own presenters. We had people who did Ignite sessions. And we had um, people who did Periscope sessions. We were able to show the videos. Tony Vincent goes around to all of the poster sessions when he's at ISTE. And he interviews people. And he streams it on Periscope for us. So I honestly got to see more of ISTE at that not at ISTE conference than I did when I was there in person because it's just so hard to get to everything. And the great thing is then you can go back and do it on your own time frame. So that link is in the live binder and feel free to explore it and check it out. There are so many great things there and it will be going on again next year. So if you can't go to ISTE but don't want to miss out, we would love to have you join us and we'll start tweeting with that hashtag as the time gets closer. 
And I think I get to continue with this one. This is that big, <laughs> Kim is laughing at me. This is that big tab that has all kinds of miscellaneous things in it. And these are all tools that can help us build our PLNs. And it, in, well, I'm going to show you what it includes. I'm going to open up um, my and do some screen sharing again because I want you to see what we have in this um, tab. So even, I mean, I ran out of room on the tab name, but um, Twitter is, a, is a, an awesome tool for connecting with other educators, but sometimes it's overwhelming and people can't figure out how to manage it to actually get it to work for them. Not that the tool doesn't work, but who they follow and connect with so that they can find great new resources as well as people who will answer their questions. So you can see we have a number of things here. And um, I think, Kim, you want to talk about um, TweetDeck, right? I think you have, we have a slide for that. So, but just to let you know, and then I'm going to stop screen sharing, there are some tools in here that are not management or productivity tools, but they are things like Pinterest, where you can go and find resources. But there's also um, lesson cast lessons. I learned about that through Twitter. LearnZillion has amazing resources for teachers. They're all free. Now, lots of these programs will have a paid version and a free version. But in most cases, the free version is plenty. So LearnZillion, I put some examples from that there. Um, I put in um, things, well, Cyberman is just the most incredible resource ever. If you go to his site, you will find resources on absolutely everything. Just do a quick search, and you will find it. And he's got, we included his Twitter resources and his hashtag um, and tweet deck resources because they're so valuable. We included something on participate learning chats, a whole bunch of stuff here on blogging. And then there are a bunch of things about with blog examples and the ways teachers are using Periscope to share what they're doing in their classroom. It is so much fun to hop into a Periscope session and see what is happening in someone else's classroom. I was just on past the Scope EDU yesterday and got to see a teacher, a fifth grade teacher from Arizona who had his students get on the mic and talk about the projects that they were creating as entrepreneurs um, with their makerspace, all completely designed by themselves. That was just wonderful. So with that, I am going to stop the screen sharing, and um, send it back to Kim. OK. Sorry, I was reading the, I love the chats. I think that's one of my favorites. Vicki found this poster, and I absolutely love it. I'd love to be able to find it in a big version and have it in my class or my training room. Um, it's one to keep and try to get in there and look at a little bit closer. I want to tell a funny tweet deck story. I think it was, I don't know what year IST was in DC, but Peggy and Joe and I were rooming together. And I, I, it's, it's nighttime and I keep hearing this blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. It reminded me of when my son was on chat tonight. Man, I was dreaming, and finally, about an hour into it, I'm going, what is that sound? And I look over, and in the bed next to us, Peggy's got her headset on, and she's got her tweet deck open, and she's talking. She's probably got 20 columns open. I don't know. And she just looks over like a kid that got caught with a flashlight underneath a blanket reading. Seriously, and she was just typing away like nobody's business. That's Peggy, always talking with the world, always keeping everybody informed, always finding out what's going on. So um, it's almost as good as the tab story. And you've all heard the tab story of when Peggy had 265 <laughs> of them open. I hope you follow Peggy on Facebook, because I got her a t-shirt that said, I have too many tabs open in my brain. It's so appropriate for her. Now, um, we have our poll question here. Um, do you use Twitter management tool like TweetDeck? So I think Laura handles the 
hopefully Laura handles those because I don't have a clue what I'm doing here. So mm -hmm. let's see. Do you use a Twitter management tool like TweetDeck? <laughs> what we're looking to see here. And Laura, do you need you need to take this over, right? She's I'm going to give people a chance to vote on this, and I'll get the replies. Kim? Okay. And I've done the show how many times, and I still get nervous. So we'll get that back, and I'm going to turn it back over to Peggy to or whenever we bring those results back in. And I was just talking with someone in here about I can't have all of the tabs or the columns open like Peggy does. I only have a couple open, and I'm, I know I'm going to get a little bit better at it, but for right now. All right, we look at that. Um, the, we've got just a few that have used it, but I bet after today, we're going to have more people using that. So let me catch up here with this. Um, when I talk about, as I mentioned before, it's, it's kind of ironic that I'm the one talking about about this because I'm still somewhat of a, a newbie to it, but I truly am understanding its valuable, how its value. It allows you to create your own personal learning network, and I'm preaching to the choir about this, and I understand that you can get to know people from around the world, share things you have in common, photo images, blog posts, all those things right now. I do follow what I consider to be key players, or what I used to consider to be key players. I'm finding out there are so many people out there average teachers, administrators, that I love what they have to say. What's really nice is I am now using it at the schools uh, because our teachers are still learning how to do Twitter and our admin are really not, but our district is getting into more social media. So as part of my job, I get to be the rah, rah, cheer, cheer, look what these people are doing, and I love that part of my job. Well, now I get to share it with the world because I will go ahead and do tweet posts about what's going on in the classroom, like Jody Dominguez and her kindergartners, yes, kindergartners who do Hour of Code, did part of the coding course, and they learned Scratch Junior, and they're out sharing and teaching other classrooms. I get to post that. Um, we've got first and second graders doing Course 1 and Course 2 at one of our schools, and yesterday I was able to post those pictures. Teachers get excited about it, so they'll get onto Twitter and follow. There, I do have an evil plan here. That gets them excited. They're going to go onto Twitter and hopefully see the value of what is going on when it comes with that. And finally, I pretty much have said goodbye to Pinterest because Twitter is my Pinterest. It's people that speak the talk that I want to hear, and it helps me so much. And I hope it's the same is true for you. And this is the tweet deck we were talking about earlier. Um, like I said, I have two going. When I'm at a conference, I can't multitask that well. So I get a couple of them going. And it adds, it's like a backstory to what's going on with the, the presenter. I'm getting more information, more insight, more resources. And it just, nobody says you have to use it. But if you do, I would suggest at the beginning only having a couple and taking it from there. Okay, the next one, Cyberry Man. If you haven't met him, the man is a character. There is this gentleman walking down the hall at one of the one of my first ISTE conferences, and he had a cape on, and I went, hmm, that's a little strange. And I met him, and it was still a little strange, but wonderfully strange. This man is a bundle of energy. He's bigger than life, and I love the fact that he still wears his cape wherever he goes. That is truly Jerry, and I'm not going to say his name right. I'm at Blum, Blumengarten is somebody to follow. He is a wealth of information, and um, I know he helped open the door for me, but I also took this site in particular and shared it with the teachers I work with in the Madison School District. There's a group of teachers. We meet once a month on a Saturday. Yes, a Saturday and no pay. And so I'm trying to get them into social media, and I showed them this resource because it isn't just for for technology, and it isn't just for presidential elections. It is where you can grow, like we said, grow your own PLN and learn about so much. Our next one is an Ed Chat, and I'm new at this, doing the Ed Chats, to tell you the truth. At the first time I did them, I was confused because you have a question and an answer, and there it's not sequential, so you're a little bit confused about that. And it may not be everybody's cup of tea, but I have to tell you, I'm doing a book study now at ISTE. There are 500 people participating, and we are doing a slow chat. And Peggy's going to talk more about that in a minute. But it's all within the regular um, tweet stream. But now I, I'm reading through and getting 
I can stop and read a question, read an answer, and go back and forth on my time and get it. And the best part is I've met some wonderful people in the chat. In fact, I met a gentleman who lives in the town that I was born in. And just making those connections, and I'm starting to follow more people because of this. And um, it's not at a specific time, so I can go in there and do it when I need to. And Peggy, I'm going to turn it over to you now so you can talk about participate. This is absolutely my new favorite tool for participating in Twitter chats. And there, there are basically two kinds of chats, in my mind anyway. One are those weekly live Twitter chats where people all join at the same time. And there are guided questions where everyone who is participating will contribute and participate by sharing their links, their ideas, their questions, and it's a, a wonderful exchange, usually on a topic. It's not usually just wide open like education technology. The screen shows you one that I've learned so much from about augmented reality. And uh, Kay Wilson does this every week, AR for Learning. And the, then, and I'm going to take you aside, and then I'm going to tell you more about how Participate works. AR for Learning um, has a weekly chat, but there are some sites, including the K-12 online conference, that have a slow chat. We had a slow chat for ISTE 2016. And what happens is you don't have to log in at a certain time. When you want to see what's going on with that hashtag, just log in to participate. And you will see an ongoing flow of tweets coming in with that hashtag. You don't have to go looking for them. You don't have to open them separately in your browser. And when you share, it automatically gives you the hashtag and puts it in. How many times do you do a wonderful tweet? send it out and realize you forgot to include the hashtag. It does it automatically for you. And um, then, and it tells you how many characters you have. So you can like people's um, tweets, and you can retweet them all within Participate. So these links are in the Live Binder. And you have to join to use it, but it's all free. And you can follow any hashtag you want. Then the other bonus they have is every resource that gets shared in a Twitter chat can become part of a collection. So for the K-12 online conference, we've got a wonderful collection of resources related to the topics of the conference. We've been focusing on design thinking in the last month. And we had learning spaces or before that. So all of those resources are in a collection. So if you search for a collection on a hashtag, you'll find them all permanently saved there for you. And you can share those with anyone or explore them at your leisure. So sign up for Participate, participate.com. Then go in and learn. Um, what's there, and check out their collections. They have resource collections that you can use as teachers with students in your classroom, and you can create your own. It's sort of like, well, in a way, it's like Pinterest, where you could go in and create um, a board that's all on one topic. But this one is more likely to be allowed in districts um, and not blocked. So check it out, and maybe you can create some, create some collections for your classroom there. I also wanted to mention, you'll find some fabulous resources on Pinterest. There are many teachers who share there. And you've got to know, Pinterest is much more than how to design your living room, how to make cute arts and crafts projects. There are teachers sharing awesome things. 
This screenshot is probably a year ago of Laura's. She probably has 100,000 followers now. And she has all kinds of boards that have hundreds of pins. They cover every subject area, every grade level, especially um, K through 6, but even to middle school. And, and just go there, and you will see how you can find even more things to grow your PLN. There are principals and superintendents that use it. Eric Scheninger has a great bunch of um, Pinterest boards where he shares resources with other educators. And it just shows you that it's something that can be very vibrant and relevant no matter what you do in education. And then they're easy to share out. I get to talk about one of my favorite people to follow. Not only do I follow him, I know him, and I get to see him every summer at um, Ed Camp or Tech Camp down in Tucson. It's Tony Vincent, and I know many of you know who he is. He introduced Periscope, and well, he or Peggy, it's always one of the two, from his Learning in Hand website, which I hope you're following. And not only his web, his his resource, but also him on social media. Live stream or Periscope is a live streaming video application, and it's live and it stays on for 24 hours. I was a little nervous, but I decided I needed to jump on board. And one morning at the school where my training center is at, they were, as part of a STEM project, they were launching a weather balloon. So I thought, I'll try it. And I checked to make that the principal said, yes, everybody here can have their picture out there. So I went on, and I'm talking to the students, and I'm checking in. A gentleman from Sweden came on. I told the kids, and they thought it was cool. The real exciting part was when Tony Vincent came on. Now, he lives in the Midwest. And so I was so proud. And I said, Tony Vincent is on. And the kids looked at me like, huh? Um, but I was still very proud, and we did it about 20 minutes and shared it out. And it was just, it made it really come to life, at least for me, and my first chance at going, hmm, this is pretty cool. And the school allowed me to do a couple more like that, and I'd sure like to see if I can get that out to more schools, but it's baby steps, and we'll just have to be careful with that. And so now Peggy's going to talk about Hope King and her blog on Periscope. Periscope has some wonderful teachers, some of whom share almost daily, and some uh, periodically. Many will get on there and share um, that they're going to do a webinar, and it's coming up in the next week. So it, you get a little intro to what they're going to be doing. You can follow people on Periscope just like you can on Twitter. And many of them use the same IDs on Periscope and Twitter. Hope King is somebody that I was so excited to meet through these various social media tools. She is a fabulous teacher at the Ron Clark Academy. And her blog is Elementary Shenanigans. And she got on Twitter and did, or on Periscope, and did a complete guided tour of her classroom. That was the most incredible thing I have ever seen. And she posted all of those Periscope videos on her blog. And that is in the live binder. So um, I hope you'll go in and actually click on that link and go look at her blog. She did it on a, a theme of Alice in Wonderland. And she did it on virtually no budget. She had parents donate things. She went to um, thrift stores and yard sales. And you are just going to be so amazed by it. And I would never have known about her if I hadn't found Periscope and started following her there. So check out what she's doing. OK, now blogging. If you want to learn more about blogging, it's Cyberry Man to the Rescue again, Cape and all. He has created yet another web page filled with information that can give you a great basis to start your own blogging experience, being it on a personal level or with your students. I would like to point out one of the links, and I of course, I can't see it because I'm not paying attention to my screen like I should. It's from McTeach. It's a way to approach blogging.
it just resonated with me. Um, she uses paper blogging to introduce it, and I read it, and I got a teacher to try it with me in a primary class, and it was a huge success. You start out with paper blogging, with your comments, with your posts, and we did a, um, a gallery walk, and they read each other's, and they put a sticky note on to respond, and it was it was good for the students. It was even better for the teachers so that they could see that initial response when students read a comment that was made on their post. Since then, we've probably done a dozen classrooms in this way from second to seventh grade. Hopefully, it will pick up even more because what is exciting for the students is when they see the responses to their blog posts. It's real world. I should say, it, even in the classroom, the first one we did where two third graders are sitting next to one another, and she, one little girl got so excited because the girl sitting right next to her posted a response to a comment. Well, if that's going to happen with somebody right next to you, imagine what's going to happen from another classroom, another school, another state, and another country. They absolutely love it, and hopefully we'll continue to do that in our district. Um, blogging in the classroom, as I said before, can be such a wonderful writing activity for students, and I should point out it does have absolute curricular value. They share their writing with their peers in the world, and as I said before, this is an authentic world or uh, authentic experience. As noted in the title of this slide, your students will be able to build their own PLNs. I know. Stop and ponder that. Tell them about comments for kids to get more responses on the student blog posts. Now, I, as I said before, I didn't really understand blogs. If it wasn't a knitting blog, I didn't read it. I, I'm confessing right now. I'm sorry. It could be because we're sharing the same bandwidth, but hopefully she can uh, get right back through Audio Setup Wizard. Both the um, student challenges and the teacher challenges on EduBlogs are fantastic. And you don't actually have to participate in the challenge to get all of these incredible resources. If you go to the links that we have in the live binder, you will get a series of step-by-step -step instructions for setting up your class blog and the pages, writing posts, um, creating good comments, adding things to them, um, images, lots of information about copyright and creative commons, all those resources are right there on that site. So if you want to learn how to start blogging with your students, that is a great way to do it. So Kim is going to try again to talk about this. OK, I was going to sing, but we lose people that way. Um, as I've mentioned before, if you're going to, and I hope you do this, start small. Um, it's kind of like exercising. If I go in and work out two hours with a new trainer, it's not going to happen because I won't be walking the next day. Same thing is true. You take it with baby steps. So you start off with people that you know um, or you, you find interesting. And luckily, I had Peggy to help me with that. Um, you can subscribe to email newsletters. I subscribe to some blogs. And Twitter has probably been the door that opened up most for me. And sharing and talking to people, getting online and taking that first initial jump. And I'm going to refer back to a story that Paula Noggle told that when she first started doing this, it was baby steps and she was really nervous. And look where Paula is at now. Someday I'll get there with you guys, but for right now I'm just going to hold on to your shirt tails and follow along and find really good resources to help me grow and to share with my teachers because that is my job. I want to be able to get out there and share with the teachers so that they too have access to these great, great resources. So again, tips and considerations, start small. Start with Classroom 2.0. That's probably going to be your best one because there are so many resources and wonderful people, nudge, nudge, wink, wink, all of you in the chat. And my favorite is that it's different learning styles. So if you want it at 7.30 at night or 
this week I was in between schools. I had my iPhone. I stopped at Safeway, got to sell it. I set out in front and I pulled up Imagineering the show last week with Howard de Blasi and I started to watch it and somebody walked by me and went, oh, Netflix, and I went, no, Peggy George, and they walked away and looked at me like I was a total weirdo. I also try to invite principals, other teaching colleagues, and administrators at the different uh, di district offices. And I also try to make note of teachers who are taking this plunge. So do you, do you have one, I'm sorry, do you use the internet to find free lessons and plans and resources? So we're going to go ahead and do a short little survey. I feel like I need to hum something from the elevator to keep you entertained while we're doing this, but I won't, okay. And Wes, yes, you do want to watch that Imagineering one. I'm only about halfway through and I've already bookmarked stuff and I have a teacher who is a Disneyland person and she is just thrilled. So you guys are going to go out and um, we're going to have a couple resources here for you to use for your free lessons. I need to stop for a second. Peggy, we're at 11. Are we just going to forge on or abbreviate our, our show? We're going to abbreviate and I'm going to um, just really quickly go through those next resources because they're all there for you and you can definitely explore them on your own. So um, I'm, I'm just going to go on the slides because that doesn't take as much time. Um, <clears throat> there are a lot of uh, local resources. For example, PBS Learning Media has resources that are global as well as local. So we have an Arizona PBS Learning Media channel and there's one that in, in all of the states. So when you go on that site, you can see all kinds of lesson plans, videos, wonderful resources. Discovery Education has lesson plans, videos, resources, all for free. They have a great scoop it of free den resources. And you can go on there, click on that scoop it. Scoop it's another great way to share resources with people or to com collect them for yourself. Lesson Cached has wonderful lessons with video tutorials. These are things your kids can use, not just for teachers, but let them go on and do the lesson on their own. We've already told you about the light binders. Um, Kim, should, do you want to tell them about the Madison light binder? I'll talk about it very quickly. Peggy George, bless her heart, came in to work with a middle school tech teacher and Peggy taught the class with the teacher and taught students how to create their own light binders and the teacher was able to use it with the students literally as a portfolio. The kids absolutely loved it. I have also started working with another school district. There's a teacher or a coach that wants a fourth grade team to start to use it for portfolios. So if it's out there on Peggy's website, use it. I guarantee you it's good. Sorry, that was kind of random. Okay. Okay, I even forgot to turn on my mic for that one. <laughs> okay, that's how much we're running or hur hurrying through here. So very quickly, a lot of the stuff we've talked about already, so it's our hosted workshops or viewing parties, um, virtual or face-to-face, -face, um, getting that, using some of those for recertification, host your own virtual conferences, go to an ed camp. We're doing one um, in March, February, March here in Arizona, and I just love ed camps. They're great. Teach Meet on conferences, um, using Blackboard just like Peggy is doing here. Google Hangouts are wonderful. Skype in the classroom. We've worked with kids that just talked with somebody in England, a marine biologist. They loved it. And sharing those sh short opportunities of learning or to share the learning from Periscope. So many, many great opportunities out there for you guys. Peggy? 
And that was just our final reminder to kind of uh, wrap around back to where we started at the beginning, that we want all of you to feel that you can take charge of your own learning in whatever ways you can. Remember, start small, one step at a time. And I also included this wonderful resource in the live binder. If you've got time, this is a long recording, but you can stop it and start it and watch it. And there are some incredible educators who have shared their information about personal learning networks and why they value being a connected educator. So that link is in the live binder. So we want to remind you to use your charge card to help you begin to take charge of your own professional learning. Remember, your interest will compound daily based on your investments of time and energy, and there is no expiration on your card. Learning take time, takes time. Be patient with yourself. I thought that was funny. Kim had a little trouble catching on. but. Just act casual and try to remember which buttons you pushed. How many times has that happened to you where you, you get someplace and something happens and you have no idea how you got there? I thought that cartoon was great. So, Lori, do we have any questions we can answer quickly? Yes, we do. There was one that you didn't ask during the show, and that is, is anyone using the EduBlog blog club? No, we have um, a couple of teachers using EduBlog. Once KidBlog started charging, they found other resources, but I haven't been able to work directly with them. So you said EduBlog Blog Club. Did I hear that That's correctly? That's correct, yes. The blog club that EduBlogs is doing, yes. KG is affirming that. That was KG's question. Okay. Um, I bet you within a week, Peggy will be an expert on it. So check back and follow <laughs> her on Twitter, right, guys? I think that's true, Kim. <laughs> <laughs> New task, Peggy says. Yeah. Any other questions? Those were the ones that were not answered during the, the show. Uh, the others that I captured were answered either in chat or as you went along. So no new questions. And thanks so much to both you, Kim, and Peggy for the great information about uh, other, other resources for teachers. And I'm going to turn this over to Peggy to talk about what's coming up for Classroom 2 Live. Just really quickly, remember we don't have a show next Saturday because Educon 2017 Philly is going to be taking place virtually. And we can all log into that and follow the sessions. So check it out. We have a great presenter on February 4th. Monica Burns, Class Tech Tools, is going to be joining us. And we're, we haven't confirmed the topic yet. But if you know her, you're, you know it's going to be awesome. And then we have a couple of dates not quite confirmed yet. But February 25th, we're going to have an entire show on Participate. And Brad Spearson is going to come back and give us an update on all the new things you can do with it now that you couldn't do when he was with us hmm, uh, more than a year ago. So we're really looking forward to that. And that slide is in the slides to let you know where to find the EDUCON um, sessions. S create a, um, a login so you'll get the logins for each session when you go that day. And don't forget about the learning revolution. Steve Hargadon has organized that. And all of these virtual conferences that we told you about or many of them, are right there on that site. So check that out. And Lori, I'm going to let you wrap up. Thanks, Peggy. You can nominate a featured teacher at this URL. There's a link in the live finder as well. And you can nominate yourself as a featured teacher. The video collection is in iTunes U for all, all the video archives. When you exit the session, the survey link should open in your browser. You can take the survey link from chat or within the Live Finder as well. Once you complete the survey, you can request a professional development certificate. And thanks to Patty Ruffing, your name prints out on the certificate. 
please make sure you request this to go to a personal email address. Schools tend, tend to block these from getting to you. Special thanks again to Dr. Peggy George and Kim Thomas, our special guests, to Steve Hargadon, founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today. Thanks so much for coming.